Thank you very much for having me here. It's my pleasure to be here tonight. And now, my machine. Um, I, when I'm starting, I want to say my, my computer is a little bit too new for the projector. That's why everything is a little bit more white and less contrasted than it's supposed to be. But you can see everything upstairs in, real, in the real colors. So let's try to do this. So one of my important things that I always say is that I want to um, stimulate dreams, experimentation, imagination, and humor, <laughs> and reveal perspectives that we all too often lack in everyday life. You will see later my main pers perspective that I work with is the bird's eye view in the video. Dance in the bird's eye view, change of perspective, but we come back to that later. Another thing that uh, I say, sometimes it's a difficult thing to do, but I say the media that I'm using is video sculpture, and I try to free the video from technology so that we can see art as a language and not as technology, because technology is something elementary. And uh, my videos also go often in private collection, so you can live with these videos because all the technical parts of the works are hidden and you can enjoy the video in its form without being connected to the technology. A very important uh, theme in my work is uh, the imbalance that we humans are creating with nature. And in a lot of my works, uh, I have these creatures, how I call them. You can see here in the bottom the bat, the hummingbird, and they are then uh, performing uh, these choreographed movements in the bird's eye view, and you can see here first time a change of perspective, for example, of the bat in the normal perspective and then the bat in the bird's eye view. And I like to use this very, uh, like the bee, the bat, the very small creatures in our ecosystems that we often tend to forget about. And they're so small, but they're so important. When we have no more bees, we will have no more poll pollution. I mean pollution, yes, pollination. <laughs> that was a fun thing to say. And <laughs> we will have no more crops, and eventually we will have no more vegetables and fruits on our planet. And we are close, actually, to get to this point. As of today, we have only 50% of bees left in the United States. Another thing is I'm trying to communicate these very deep and strong messages through beauty. I believe that uh, Beauty, uh, like beauty can be strong and can, uh, can communicate in a beautiful way strong messages. And those um, bubbles that I'm making, you will see them upstairs too. I will now start to play a first video. Um, they also play with this idea you peer in and you almost have a conversation with yourself. So you're looking into this miniverses, how I call them, or bubbles. You Sometimes, as you can see on this photo, you also do actually see a reflection of yourself. But it's somehow looking at the, at the micro world and almost having a, con a conversation with yourself also. I'm going now to, go to play a first video. say the, the video sculptures are really difficult to see, not in real time. So you will have the opportunity to see this upstairs. You have all the different angles and perspectives. But here, what we are seeing, this, this piece inside this bubble are actually dancers that are uh, in bee costumes and seen uh, from a bird's eye view. And uh, I will talk after in more details about the language of bees.
Yes. So, an important factor of my work is collaboration. Um, to realize my works, I go through many, many steps of medias, dance, choreography, costume design, literature, video, audio design, sculpture, different forms of sculpture. I work with glass blowers, with plastic, with wood, with always new medias and performance. And in a way, the process of this art making also orchestrates in the work itself, because my uh, choreographies are always based on groups. Uh, I always also play with this idea from the view from the universe to the planet. One single person is just a dot, which you will see later with the alphabets. It needs the orchestration of group in order to uh, formulate messages to the universe in order to take actions. And in every of these uh, media, I work with a collaborator. So I work with a choreographer, I work with many dancers, with costume designers, with a poet, with many video personnels, audio designers, and different art fabricators. We cannot see this really well here in the left, but I hope you can see it. Now I'm coming to the bird's eye view choreography. Um, as you can see here in the bottom, uh, these ladders that are formed towards later. We, in green screen studios, we are filming um, groups of dancers and we are writing alphabets and in post-production, we form them to ladders. In this case, this is a production with six dancers. We have a very um, exact timed choreography and we write every letter. We dance every letter in that choreography and then in post-production I'm able to, or we are able to write these letters and questions. I'm going to play you a video now. For example, this one. This is actually the video that's inside a portal that you can see upstairs inside the orbs. But you can see here now these formations of, uh, of uh, dancers asking questions. Again, the questions are also related to the environment. Here it's asking, um, the blue ice cream. Also, these butterflies are also dancers, customized dancers. The text also is sort of a second layer. I always say you can enjoy the works at, just by looking at them, and then if you want, you can also read the questions. But the work also functions without reading the questions. <coughs> Upstairs, you can see it in high resolution. <coughs> Another aspect that um, I like to talk about in my work is the kaleidoscope. The formations of these people is also always connected to kaleidoscopic formation, looking through a kaleidoscope and watching these people becoming a pattern. Sort of the individual uh, person is abstracted in the group and it forms a pattern. And it's fascinating to watch and becomes its own beautiful thing and something else. Those, I don't know if I said that already now, this, these letter-based works, I call them video alphabets. I like to create my own language uh, all through my work. Here you can see uh, now backstage how we are filming these uh, choreographies in uh, green screen studios. 
Here we are forming letters. The Y, the C, the V. Again, in the normal perspective, you can rarely recognize the letter. In the bird's eye view, it becomes what it is. <coughs> and then those uh, video alphabets are always combined with different uh, abstract things and also different backgrounds. That's a whole lot of process to create these backgrounds in the so-called video alphabet. Th those are studio works. In this case, also what you saw before in the video and what you will see upstairs, it's uh, cinematics, which is sound-based, like the sound is making the images. I can maybe play you another one of that. So you can see that now here. This work, for example, the backgrounds <coughs> that you see there, they are actually live uh, cinematics, li uh, sound patterns that are making these visuals. Pattern, geometry, symmetry, and mathematics are all forms of movements of physicality and essential structures in nature. Flora, fauna, microorganisms, wind, turbulence, human DNA, the physical universe. To um, organize my works, I uh, rely on colors, and the colors are then connected to elements and orange and red tones are associated with fire, blue and gray with water and air, yellow and green with earth and nature. So that's something that always goes through this connection of the elements and the colors. Here you can see one of my uh, very new big works that we just finished. It was a commission for, a, for Royal Cruise and it has these nine bubbles that again or organized with the color spectrum of the rainbow and every color is related to the element and then uh, you can read all these questions inside the bubbles. <coughs> the questions, that's another thing that uh, became my special way. I like to ask questions as a way of thinking. I don't think that you should try to answer these questions, or it's probably difficult to answer these questions, but they are here just to think. I was inspired many, many years ago by uh, Pablo Neruda's book of question. It was his, it's a Chilean poet, and that was his very last book that he wrote. That's sort of a similar type of questions that you can discover in my works. And again, here in that case, the, the, they are related to colors, I maybe read you a few because you might not be able to see it. For example, I read you one of every question maybe. And here, because this sculpture goes on a boat, they are somewhere somehow connected to the water, to the sea. For example, here it's asking in the blue, when does the shark attack the reflection of the blue moonlight? Then there's the moon. Does the moon hide at the center of the sea? The green, how many layers of green make the color of the sea? The sun, how can we cool down the glittered sunbeams? Why do dolphins eat yellow plastic things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good, they wanna be funny too. I'm glad that you're laughing, that's important. Why don't we create, I don't know, this, uh, how, for example here, can orange seahorses be domesticated and trained? <laughs> and then the uh, red one, why does the red coral reef bleed? Purple one, is the sea star naked or is it wearing a purple dress? Here, uh, this is the Endangered Species series. You can see that upstairs. I'm not going to show a video on that. Again, this is uh, connected to uh, this main topic of the disappearance of the pollinators. Uh, I, um, 
dedicated this work to the four, four most important uh, pollinators on the planet, which is the bee, which we all know, but actually also the butterfly, the bat, and the hummingbirds, the birds in general. Um, I created this type of uh, labels for food that was the inspiration, and on the left, you can see then upstairs the pollinator itself, how it's functioning, and on the right, uh, these pills, uh, an idea of astronaut food-like creations. Once we will have no more um, pollinators, eventually we will have no more crops, and no more fruits, and no more vegetables, and we will have to eat pills. And to uh, show that the animal then is multiplied and becomes something else. But you can really see that upstairs much better than trying. Uh, often on openings, when it's possible, I also have some of my character life in the space, which then again brings a closer approach between the work and the creation, the process of it. In this case, this was actually the C24 opening in New York, and uh, I had the pollinators there, the butterfly, the bat, the bee, and the hummingbird. And they were there. Usually they're sort of sculptural performances. In this case, they had a net, and they were bringing fruits with questions on it to the, to the viewers, to the visitors. Portals, you will see upstairs many of those too. Again, that's uh, uh, mainly based on questions uh, and different topics. In this case, humor, time, ideology, hope, possession, and homeland. They are more closer to, the, to us in this case than to the uh, environment. They're sort of inspired by a questionnaire, to also asking questions about all these things. You can see that upstairs again with the video alphabet. Capsule is another form of also the, the pills that you could see before, uh, a bigger work that um, also goes uh, through the color system and actually talks about cells, the really original, the origin of everything. That was also at the C24 gallery. Here you can see video stills of these uh, choreographed works. That's the series of bubble. The bubbles uh, are important works. That there's an entire series of that that has been growing since 2011. Uh, I feature sometimes uh, legendary people or artists. For example, I will show you now the work that I did with Philip Glass, uh, featuring him as the master of time inside a bubble. The bubble also wants to sort of conserve things for the future when they're not here anymore. And it's this idea to uh, keep artists there in that capsule forever, if there is a forever. Um, so that's one material universe. It's a piece I'm going to show you a little bit of that. So that's, and first I'm going to show you the Philip Glass prop. It's all, this is, imagine inside a bubble, inside a bubble with two, two glass spheres. The idea of these works is on one side, you have the master of an element, in this case, time, not an element, an artifact, and on the right, uh, the manufactory of it. So on the right, again, we have, uh, these dancers uh, forming the clock through their body action, through the bird's eye view and the choreographed, costumized work. And on the left, we have Philip Glass featured as the master of time. I'm sorry about the quality. It's a little, I hope you can see it. And then the, the green screens also allows me to make like these little creatures you can see here. There's always, uh, it can, you can break all the rules with the green screen. Scale, uh, they can fly, they can do anything. So that's a really fun thing to experiment with. If you work with video, I can highly recommend to experiment with uh, green screens.
there's many, many layers of stories inside, but for example, these little creatures here, the, there was the idea that they're the past, the present, and the future, but there's always a lot, a lot of little stories that are here in order to create the works, and then after it becomes something else. And everyone can put its own imagination in it, and the magic. Okay. Oh yes, here I'm featuring another artist. I want to show you a little bit of this because that's fun to see. This piece I'm featuring uh, an actor from New York, Jeff Sobel, and it's based on uh, one of his pieces. That's also something I sometimes do when I see a show of an artist and I'm interested in his works, then we tr translate it into a video sculpture. Again, with the idea to keep it, because performing arts is something that's here and then goes away again. That's a series that constantly grows. There's now new ones in pro progress. In this piece, this guy is, uh, sitting in a UVC now later. also in a bubble, in two big hand-blown uh, glass bubbles. It's a guy that's inside his storage room and thinking what he needs and doesn't need. All these questions about how much do we need, how much do we need to be free. Uh, there was also a performance on that that we actually did at the art fair. Which where people are collecting, so asking this question: What do you need? What do you not need? Do you consider a dog property? You know what you need. But for you, what is property? Is it something that you bought? Something that you inherited? There's also property? sound that you might, opinion, might not be able who to hear. I stopped just now. There's one funny scene that I want to show you. Somewhere here. This is fun. turn into a different direction. Going back to the bees now, also the um, title of the show upstairs, Bee Planet. I think bee is probably my, one of my most important topic, topics in works. Bees also, and I do that more and more, I'm also fascinated by them because my language is dance, and bees communicate with another by dancing. And they have very precise uh, form of communication through their so-called waggle dance. When they fly back from a flower to the hive, they are able to communicate direction, quality, and distance of the flower with the dance, with their waggle dance. So in, uh, in the video, we studied that, and we are inspired by that to build up the choreography. And so precise. Uh, how these creatures and natures is built, and through our influences, we are um, disturbing them from behaving the way they have to behave. 
Uh, and then, of course, the second or the most important factor of these works is the, uh, the colony collapse disorder, the disappearance of the beast that I've already mentioned before. Um, again, in the bubble, to keep it there, to keep, to conserve the bees for the future, when they might not be here anymore. You can also see this piece upstairs in one of the bubbles, and actually on the planet, on the bee planet. This is another, how much, oh, I still have a little bit of time. I could talk to you for three hours, so I have to be careful. <laughs> um, that's another important character that she's always around. She sometimes uh, is around life, the bubble lady. She's sort of the goddess of this, of my universe, we could say maybe. And let me play you a video. She's this lady. that lives in the skies. She's the master of air. She's the one who takes care of the pigeons and the birds. In this video, she goes uh, to the city to collect the birds that have lost their natural ability to fly, and she brings them back and trains them to fly again and sends them back again, trying to re-imbalance nature, what used to be and is not here anymore. It's also in form of a bubble of two. Every circle is in, inside a glass bubble. I wait until you can see some pigeon creatures that are also choreographed by dancers. They will appear soon, I think. Here, they're coming. Again, that's also uh, dancers that are dressed up as pigeons. This piece is also upstairs, the Last Supper, question mark. It also talks about the same topic of the disappearance of the, of the pollinators. We have two uh, plates. One is the plate of today, and one is the plate of tomorrow, I imagined. Uh, one is displaying pollinators and goes through the color spectrum of, of vegetables and fruits. And in front, <coughs> there is this uh, astronaut-like food, uh, what I imagined it could look like. You can see that upstairs. Here you can see, again, the color spectrum. I worked in a sort of kaleidoscopic ways with vegetables and fruits, not how they taste, but how they look, and made this green, yellow, orange, red purple dish, and on top of it, a choreography with dancers. And on the one of tomorrow, the plate of tomorrow, you will see upstairs the, the uh, dancers are actually look, just sitting there and looking what used to be in the past. That's the Philip Glass bubble. Here, I'm showing you backstage. Uh, it's an important thing, I always think. We're actually now making a book from my last 10 years and we put a lot of backstage in it because the process of these works is very important to see because the final work, you see, uh, you can tell there's a lot going on to get to this point, but the, I think the process is very important to see. Here, this is the shooting uh, with Philip Glass in a, in a building in New York. That's another backstage view with the complex costumes uh, in the same space. Here you can see the bee and the pigeon. 
in the costume. Um, there's another body of work that's called Video Planet. You will see uh, five of them upstairs. Uh, they are projections on spheres uh, in different sizes. Sometimes I compose entire universes with these spheres uh, constellations. And there are many different um, video planets. In this case, um, the RGB planet uh, also features these kaleidoscopic multiplications of dancers. And that was the first video planet that was showing at the Maxi Museum in Rome. It was an important work uh, that was in the entrance of the opening of the museum. And it's a dialogue between, uh, between a robot and a human. So again, that a robot and a human that tried to talk to another. Upstairs, you can see five planets. So you have the three-dimensional shape of it. Again, what is also very important, working with the birds of view, as you can see here, the close-up, so that you can actually have, really see it's a human being, and you have a, uh, have a zoom in, and you have a closer approach to this individual dancer. You can see how she feels, uh, her emotions, and then the contrast of it on the, on the right of it, where it becomes the multiplication of the dancers becomes something else. The individual uh, disappears in the group. I think uh, maybe I'm going, there's many more works, and I think I probably talked enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I let you uh, ask questions. But I maybe just quickly go through this also series of work that I did of like daily life objects that become video sculptures, like cups, vases, this kind of thing. Again, with the idea that you can really live with that. You can have that in your house. You can, and the idea to make objects alive. Like with video sculptures, we can put stories inside uh, objects. So I think it's a very exciting media to use. That's the vase. That's a globe. That's a whole other body of work that I collaborated with, a, uh, with an architect. They're called mini-verses. They are built with layers, layers of uh, material, like architectural model. And again, they reveal video inside the openings. They're sort of really the microcosmos. It's a beautiful series that we did years ago. The chess. Also looking at Earth from a distance, and uh, I was fascinated by chess because it's a very beautiful mat metaphorical um, structure of society. So, so we did this dance with uh, 32 dancers and uh, actors uh, being uh, the chess pieces, the black and the white ones. And here you can see some stills of that. It's a 24 minute piece. And there's more video planets. That's the, uh, here at the end I have a few uh, exhibition views. This was the C24 gallery that you've mentioned before, the solo show there that was called Bang Bang. This is the uh, museum exhibition at Fige Art Museum, what I mentioned before, that I make entire uh, constellations with this video planet which you will also see upstairs in a small form, but I composed them in this moment. There's a moment, in the center there's the sun, somewhere there's the moon, and then there's, I think, a total of 23 video planets. And there's a moment in, the, in this, they're all synchronized, and there's a moment in the composition where the sun takes everything over and the entire space becomes light. There's another moment where the moon, where it becomes night. So these, these video planets, they, they disform the, the light. They change the light in the entire space. So that's a, a thing that I like to work with when it comes to this. And they are really beautiful experience. So this is a VIP lounge that I did in Houston last year. This was also a solo show, uh, another 
Museo Video Planet Constellation in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, in Amubi. Here, uh, that's how video planets can go into private collections. People put them in their houses and live with them. And that's it. That's, um, I guess, the end of my... Thank you.